Hello everyone and welcome to the Endless Rise VIP webinar series. We're going to be going over web design on this webinar and I got a couple guest speakers here with me. If everyone can let me know if they can hear me okay. Uh, I, I'm getting a little bit of echo. If anyone else is hearing echo, let me know. Okay. Um, Steven, Mike, real quick, if you guys don't mind muting their mic so I can detect if that's where the echo is coming from or not, that'd be great. There we go. It was one of the two, <laughs> so I'm not sure which one. If either of you guys uh, have speakers on, that might be doing it, or um, could be one of those two. So. All right. Well, everyone, to, to get things kicked off, I wanted to introduce you to, to our two guest uh, speakers that we have on today, which they're just uh, resellers that use our services as well. And I thought one of the best things to do before I get into my rants about all the line items in web design and covering all the different topic matters I have behind the PowerPoint would be to, address, to introduce uh, Mike and Steve. And we're going to just talk a little bit about what their experience is like and utilizing our web design team a little bit about uh, maybe if they have any sales secrets that they want to um, tell you about and give you an opportunity to ask them some questions and talk about profit margins a little bit. We'll probably talk with them for a good 20 minutes and we're going to continue on with the rest of the webinar and going over some of the more technical issues of the web design um, on the line items as well as, for instance, what mobile responsive is and of course towards the end our, our big offer on sites just for resellers. So, um, Mike, uh, to start with, if you don't mind just kind of giving yourself an introduction and kind of letting people know who you are, what, what your background is in the industry a little bit um, that you do want to talk about, and then uh, I'll introduce Steve. So, Sure. Uh, my name is Mike, and I'm based here in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, I got into the whole local marketing uh, business about, almost about three years ago. Uh, and prior to that, I worked uh, in corporate America for about 12, 12 11 plus years uh, doing IT and some operations work. Um, and as far as my experience with uh, uh, Endless Rides goes, I've been using them for two plus years uh, in a variety of capacity, obviously one of them being uh, web design services. Uh, some of the services that we offer here for our local clients are websites, anything in the digital marketing space, be it SEO, Google Maps, uh, PPC, uh, and to some extent, uh, some social media that we're getting into. So that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. Uh, and, and Mike, how many websites have you built awesome. in your uh, lifetime? Uh, the funny thing is, I actually can't even install a WordPress, right? Oh, yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. How, how many have you sold? Let's put it that way. Okay. You know, I, uh, if I were to put a number to it, I'd probably say, you know, 50, maybe, yeah, probably about 40 or 50 websites. And most of them have been fulfilled by, by your company, Endless Rise. And, uh, you know, uh, the reason for that is I've used, uh, other companies like Odesk or somebody cheap on Fiverr to you know, build me a quick website. And through trial and error, I found out that you get what you pay for. And also that they don't have a really good system in place with, with Endless Rise. You know, we've got a, a great workflow, a system that you can plug in, and you know the product that you're going to get at the end of the process is going to be good and it's going to be consistent. So my experience with, with the, the web design team thus far has been great and uh, you know all my clients that have been able to uh, either redesign their site and give them a new website or move them over to a mobile website they've all been very pleased. Awesome and hey, hey Mike did you call into the webinar or are you on uh, the mic and speakers option because we're still getting a real strong echo from you? Uh, I'm actually on my headset um, I'm on a headset. I'm not sure, Paul, how to. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, no problem. Well, if you just don't you mind muting your mute? mic when you're you yeah, want not me to talking. Mute myself for now, and you can yeah, carry that, out that with would Steve. Be great. And then... Perfect. And uh, Steve, if you don't oh. mind introducing yourself. Okay. I mean, 
All right, I just unmuted myself, so can you <laughs> hear me? Steve. Loud and clear. Th thanks can for coming on. I really appreciate it. All right. Great. Um, well, uh, I've been in the IT business for about 23 years. We're in Sacramento. Uh, we got into websites and SEO uh, about oh, about five to six years ago. We started uh, really trying to go after drawing uh, leads for our own IT services. And we kind of, uh, you know, just started digging into it, and it was a lot of fun uh, in comparison to my regular IT uh, work. Uh, so we uh, started bringing on clients one by one. Uh, we do it a little bit different. We mostly uh, go after clients and saying uh, we can uh, increase your leads on a monthly basis and we charge for that on a monthly basis. Uh, we come in and usually take over their website uh, 100 percent. We usually crush their old site, build a new site, and then uh, uh, really target it towards ranking, towards the services and the area that they uh, do business with, uh, in, uh, which we kind of verticalize towards home improvement. So um, we have probably about We've probably built 30 to 50 sites. I have probably about 18 to 20 reoccurring clients. Um, probably 80% of those, again, are in the home improvement. You know, things like uh, sun rooms, patio covers, uh, bathroom remodel type clients. Um, and the way that we came on to use Endless Rise is once we, you know, I, have a two st uh, I had a two-person staff, one a web designer and one content writer that both were kind of trained in SEO, but once we got about 10 to 15 sites, uh, uh, what we felt happened, or what actually happened, is any time we brought in a new site, we had to do a big bulk load of work, and then we weren't putting um, the work into our existing clients uh, enough at that point. So uh, we searched out a solution where we can connect with a, a company that has the staff that can grow with us. Uh, where we can actually, uh, you know, bring on one to five uh, new web builds a month, and also at the same time, once they're built, I can connect them into uh, SEO, uh, the local business sites, or whatever I need without having the problem of having to go out and hire a new staff and train them and everything. So. Uh, the ER model for me is, is basic, uh, basically out of convenience, which of course, uh, you know, we make great margins and everything like that, uh, 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 but I don't run in, uh, into the problems of uh, having to go out and, and, and hire a web de and more web designers and things like that to keep up with the work. That's, that's kind of a, uh, the process that we're working with ER right now, or Endless Rise. So. Uh, thanks, Steve, and I've got a, a couple questions coming in and uh, anyone else that's a panelist or an organizer if you if everyone doesn't mind muting their mic uh, if you're not currently talking that will help a lot because I'm still getting some reverb uh, Steve I got a question for you um, do your clients compete in the same market like it, it, whenever you're in a particular niche if you're doing web design for multiple people that are in the same niche do they have any issues with you being in competition from one to the other um, it's it's funny you say that. It, uh, it's not an issue until I actually get one in the same area. So um, in the beginning, I told my clients that I wasn't going to take uh, any uh, competitive clients uh, within a 30-mile radius, but I've kind of changed that. That, that was in my very early days because no marketing company would, would say that, uh, like a cable company or uh, uh, anybody selling ads. Um, Internally, I kind of think that depending on the population uh, that we're serving, like you know, if it was the LA area for home improvement, or like for kitchen remodel, there's I could definitely serve 10 to 15 in a 60 mile radius of LA. So uh, to me, I think it's unethical because to a, to a point, I am competing against uh, uh, myself if I have three clients in the same competitive zone. But on the other hand, if there's a population uh, and demand for for that, it's really not an issue. At the end of the day, we are uh, capturing how many calls that come off the websites. We're capturing the emails, and I have a pretty good status of uh, the performance uh, that we're bringing to our clients. Uh, you know, meaning right. if 
if it's a sunroom sale and I'm getting 20 calls and, a, and they're making $25,000 profit uh, per sale uh, on a sunroom, uh, you know, against what I'm charging, I know if I'm doing a great job for them. And uh, if, uh, again, if I can serve two to three in that market, uh, and that population can can uh, serve up leads for all three of them. Uh, everybody's happy. Right, makes sense. And um, Steve AJ Allen, that's a good look inside. Any idea where that one came from? That one was built uh, J Allen Communications. Yeah, uh, oh, that's is, right. It looks like an A at uh, first. Was built but... by yeah, yeah. That's his logo. Uh, that was completely built by your department. So uh, that is our kind of our, we're looking to push all our new websites through Endless Rise specifically because I'm taking my web designer and moving more into a management mode. Uh, so uh, once we get the defined process, I can really start selling and I don't have to worry about the wheels falling off the cart if I bring on three new clients this month. I know Endless Rise has the capacity to take on three new clients or five new clients a month while at the same time servicing my 10 clients on an ongoing basis on a monthly for SEO because again I'm not project based I am uh, I charge monthly uh, ch uh, with my clients I also have a partnership with my clients that they can't unhook from me uh, they can't just stop services there's clauses that protect me so uh, when I went out and searched for a subcontractor the biggest thing was making sure that they had the back end staff that I wasn't going to grow out. Uh, you know, I could have found a, a, a one person subcontractor or a group of three. And what I found is most people are working out of their house, they, their internet con connectivity, because I failed a couple times choosing other subcontractors. I also had the problem that they weren't working on my business hours, which was a huge problem. Uh, it doesn't seem like a problem because you say, oh, well, they work at night, but with a lot of little things that happen when you're in the build cycle, uh, you need quick answers and it speeds the whole process up. And, and when I shifted back to Endless Rise, uh, I think uh, you know, it's January, uh, you guys work on our own business time. Uh, you, I think you have two to 300 employees, is that correct, Paul? Uh, over 300 now, yeah. So, yeah. And, and we so, are, so are. all of the... Yeah, your rates are competitive, and so all of the, the issues that I had with other subcontractors, I haven't had with Endless Rise. And now, of course, your, your systems and how you track things uh, is it's just so far above anything that I've looked at so far with anybody else. That's, that's, that's kind of an extra added bonus for me. Well, thanks, Steve. And was this a templated or a custom build? A theme build or a custom build? This was... Uh, so what we did is we uh, basically uh, worked with your department, and uh, I really uh, impressed on your department to come up with your ideas uh, and, and then come back and show me mock-ups, and that's exactly what was done. Uh, it was probably okay. an internal template that was chosen by your department, but the, the graphic and the design and the layout was all by uh, your department. Awesome. And, and last question for Steve. Uh, Steve, uh, what kind of markup do you do in terms of you know just talking about it in reference to how much you pay for it maybe not specific rates but you know let's, mm. let's if you're paying x amount for a site uh how many times would you mark it up for instance if you paid a hundred dollars for it would you mark it up by four times for 400 or if you paid a thousand would you mark it up by four <laughs> times or i mean but honestly even though i told you 400 percent is I, what i put in the email but honestly what what do you usually get in terms of a profit margin on a build I would say uh, I don't build that way for my clients, but every once in a while I do okay. project out. Like uh, you know, uh, I would see uh, definitely uh, a three to four hundred percent margin on anything that we do. Uh, you know, uh, so I, I, I just that would just be normal. Uh, you know, I, I with with your costs and, and what I can market up, I'd see a three to four hundred percent markup. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Steve, I know you're a busy guy. I'm going to give uh, everyone on the line here, if everyone can tell Steve, thanks for coming on. He's going to have to probably get going. I know he's a busy guy here. So if anyone had any, I've, you're saying thanks, Steve. Wish you could see the questions here, but 
I'll have to come back and answer some of these. Steve, I really appreciate being on. If you need to, to go ahead and, and leave, feel free to, to head on out. But if you want to stick around, by all means. But I know that, that you said that you got some meetings coming up. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign out, and I appreciate uh, uh, all, the, uh, all the great work you guys have been doing. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. And then I've Bye-bye. got um, – hey, Mike, can we do a quick sound test with you? <laughs> See if that echo maybe has hey, gone now. I'm back here. Hey, the echo's gone. That's wonderful. Mike, do, you, do you mind commenting just a little bit on uh, the pricing questions and, and any sales-related tips that you have for everyone on the line? Imagine you're in an auditorium. You've got a lot of people sitting in front of you that are marketing agencies looking at you saying, Mike, what can you tell me to make me more successful in selling websites and also helping me to understand how I can price them and what to expect from interfacing with Endless Rise on them in terms of what's it like to just call into sales and who do you speak to when you call into sales and what kind of consulting do you get and um, that sort of a thing. If you don't mind just taking maybe five minutes to talk about that. Sure. Um, first off, I think it's really important uh, to have a, a clear strategy as to uh, how you're going to market and position yourself and your company. And when I first started three years ago, I would sell anything that I could, right? whether it be a website or a blog package or anything. But now, uh, what I do is when I go to networking events or when I have to give my elevator pitch, I don't lead in myself as a web design company. I lead myself as a web marketer. And so oftentimes, I'm not prospecting people to sell them a website. Mm -hmm. Uh, I go in as a marketer, and when I do my audit or review, which, you know, uh, Endless Rice can definitely help us with, but we make a pretty convincing case that before they invest any amount of money on any marketing plan, be it SEO or PPC, that they're better off, you know, uh, updating their website or getting a new website because the conversions are not going to be where they ought to be. So when you operate from that position where, you know, you're putting clients' best interests before yours, a lot of clients see that, sense that, and they want to work with you uh, on a continuous basis. So I would say you, know, you got to have a clear strategy as to how you want to sell web design. Is it going to be your leading offer? And there's nothing wrong with that. Early on, I did that. I went in and did sold mobile websites or quick, you know, uh, facelifts on websites. Uh, but these days, that's that's not my leading offer. Uh, but I certainly get a lot of uh, referrals from uh, past clients saying, "Hey, you know, you did a great job on the website. Could you help, you know, my buddy so and so, and help them with their roofing site or a plumbing site or whatever that be." Um, as far as pricing goes, um, I think it's pretty consistent with what Steve uh, Steve's margins were. You know, obviously, uh, my our track record's been. I think we mark it up times three, or maybe even times four, but I, at least three times uh, uh, the basis, cost basis. Uh, we've done some sites that were a little bit more high touch and involved a little bit more customization. So in those cases. We definitely go up a lot higher, but at a minimum, I tend to uh, do it at least three hundred percent, if not four hundred percent more. Um, awesome. And uh, I mean, there are Mike, what's the what what's mm-hmm. the out of curiosity? What's the most you've ever charged for a website? Not not, not you don't even have to talk about profit margins, but what's the largest site you've ever sold in terms of cost? Uh, I think uh, forty-five hundred dollars was was right. one that I charged because it had. Um, some customization involved a little bit more uh, graphic intensive, and they were not kind of like your you know cookie cutter websites. A lot of the ones that I've done, eighty percent of the volume of the websites that we do are sort of template sized because we've done this time and again. And that's the other thing when you work with Endless Rights on your team, I've already built that report with the project manager and his team, and they know uh, what I'm what I'm looking for when I say, hey, I need a great lead capture page or a good landing page or a good website. For you know, a plastic surgeon, they know exactly what kind of calls to action to put in, what kind of offer, what kind of images I'm looking for. So the the build time uh, is significantly less now. Um, so yeah, so it's been a great great process thus far. Awesome, Mike. Well, my, if everyone can give a shout out to Mike and, and thank him for coming on. Mike, Mike and Steve uh, came on on their own time, on their own accord, just to 
let everyone know, you know, a little bit about what it's like to work with us. And they really just came on to help all of you out. So if you guys can give a shout out to Mike and, and give him thanks, because sometimes it's just nice to hear from you, someone that's in your same position that's using us. And that's really the purpose of bringing them on so that it, we just bridge that gap between me speaking and you listening and you're able to hear someone in your same position that's currently using us. So, Mike, I do appreciate you coming on, bud, and um, hopefully... Um, oh, and I appreciate you fixing the audio. <laughs> That's great. So thanks, Mike. And you've got about a, another 150 thanks sitting here in the in the comments for you. All right. Uh, All right thanks, Bob. Good luck, guys. Thanks, Mike. So uh, the Job, the Job is back. I don't know how many people remember uh, the the great, the famous Jeremy Job. Jeremy, are are you there? And he's not there. <laughs> he's probably unmuting his mic. But actually, Jeremy, I saw you come into the uh, webinar on two different logins. So let me see if I can promote the other one to panelist here. Jeremy Job is one of our um, most well-liked uh, resellers, and he recently <laughs> flew out here to give us a visit. Jeremy, are you on the line now? I think I needed to, to promote you there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I'm sure. There we go. Can you hear me okay? Jeremy, thanks for coming on the line. Hey. I, I saw that you you were you were typing in there when I was asking some of these questions, saying that the largest site build that you'd sold was for thirteen thousand. So, yeah, that that's rock and roll. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an absolute absolute custom job. Um, the client had to do a lot of revisions, um, but we we built a custom gallery. We built everything from scratch uh, in WordPress, and um, and so yeah, it ended up going into the thirteen thousand range. Awesome. Most expensive site, though, to date that I've heard of is $3 million, and it wasn't from my company, I wish, but it took 18 months to develop and uh, to design and develop. It was the city, it was a municipal uh, website for the city of Seattle, and they spent $3 million on their website. So anybody out there who's worried about charging too much money, I don't, I, I, I don't think you have too much to worry about. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You, you know, we, we, we've handled site builds. I mean, right now we're actually working on a quote to a site build that's around $100,000, and we, we've hold, handled builds from time to time at 20000 plus. So we can handle large builds. The majority of the builds that we handle, our costs that we're paid on it, are, are somewhere between four hundred and a thousand dollars That's usually the typical range that we fall into. So... Jeremy, I appreciate you being on the line here, and if you don't mind, we'll catch up with Jeremy more towards the end of the presentation. Hopefully, Jeremy's able to stick around, and, and Jeremy, you can co-present with me on the, the webinar. Are you okay with that? You have time? And then uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine. towards the end of the webinar, we'll talk about what Jeremy's flight was like out here. Jeremy flew out to the Philippines and, and um, stayed out here and got to meet the entire crew. So we'll talk about that more towards the end. Um, but I want to go ahead and jump into the presentation and just to help me co-present here as well, I've got Jeremy, but also Roy, are you um, are you on the line? Is your audio um, working okay? Just do a sound check. Yep, I'm here. All right, thanks Roy. I'm gonna be asking you some questions as we go along. Uh, can so. you Roy is the one of the he Hi. he's the lead design consultant and actually design director in the company. So whenever you call in, especially if you have larger projects to talk about, you'd be speaking to Roy, and Roy will be helping me get through some of this presentation. So let me get started here with everything. I'll start from the current slide. Now, as we go through the web design, I'm going to be going through line item by line item what is included yeah. in, in our packaged web design uh, web design packages. I'm also going to be going over the services menu and how to PDF that out, so if you needed to give that to a client, our sales collateral, and why mobile responsive design is really hot right now, and a little bit about the difference, of course, because I always like to, to um, address the difference between a value sales pitch and a technical sales pitch. And um, Jeremy, have you ever been in a position when you're pitching someone on a design build and you just talk about the value, you don't get into the technical issues, uh, you just talk to them about why they need it, it looks pretty. Um, yeah. People like how pretty it looks. It'll convert customers better. And that's really showing them the value side of things versus someone that Sign knows it. why they need someone it, but they have more technical questions it. for you. Or have you ever been in a situation with a technical person versus someone you don't need to be technical with? Versus, versus someone you don't need to be technical with. 
I would say out of every every client prospect, every person I've talked to since I started this company four years ago, maybe five percent uh, understand the technical aspect, and I typically then defer over to guys like Roy or Justin, uh, whoever whoever I've got uh, available at the moment. Um, so for the most part, no. What I sell when it comes to a website is the fact that a website gives you absolute dominion over your brand and over and over what you want to say to your clients. Um, it gives an opportunity for you to present the best case for your company, uh, and so you know that, that, that. And I also promote the fact that a good website is not, doesn't doesn't necessarily look good more than it works good. And so I really pitch user experience, things of that nature. Awesome. So on the value sales pitch, and I would awesome. I so agree with. Pitch, um, I'm getting echo again. So if you guys uh, don't mind muting your mics, as I'm going to start getting through a lot of the presentation here. I think I, actually, Jeremy, I think it might be your mic. The target persona for a value sales pitch, absolutely. Typically, someone who's non-technical, right? Uh, and that's the vast majority of the time, like like Jeremy stated. But you do want to know the technical side of things because even someone that's non-technical, oftentimes they might ask you a technical question just to see what your answer is like. And if you don't have a good answer or if you're stuttering, then they might lose trust in you. And on the value sales pitch side, you need to understand why your product is important. And we're going to go over that because that's what the sales collateral covers. So. On the value sales pitch tools, of course, you have the sales collateral, which is going to let people know why they need mobile responsive design, what are the benefits, what are the competitors doing, what is the future of mobile responsive design. And also you can show a marketinghelper.net, which is part of your own design portfolio. So jumping into this to bring everyone back, from the services module, if you click on services and come in, you'll see this interface. And then if you click on web design, it's going to bring you into the web design services. This is where you're going to see your pricing on things as well as all the different packages that we have. They're all WordPress based, right? So inside of this interface, you have your marketing helper, which you can click on that banner to view your web design portfolio. And although it is what we call marketinghelper.net, if you have the, webs the, the dashboard domain mask, then you'll be able to see your design portfolio come up and it will stay on your own domain if it's domain mask. And this will have an examples of the different sites that are on here. Let this load up real quick. And then also from the services, keep in mind, whenever you click on view package details, the big red button right here, it's going to bring you to the services in-depth menu that tells you all the line item details. And then you click on web design services here, and it's going to bring you into the web design services. Now we break the web design services up between mobile responsive and non-mobile responsive and whether they're a themed build or a custom build. Now, if you click on, for instance, if we're going to click on mobile responsive theme build for WordPress, this button, it would bring me to the service details. And this is where you would see all of the line items. And later on in the presentation, we're going to go through all these line items and I'll see how quickly I can get through those. But keep in mind, you can PDF this, all these line items out. And if you wanted to see what each line item means you can hover over them to see the comment on them and keep in mind if you want to PDF this out you're not going to see the comments on each line item so if you click on show in the green box here and scroll down to the bottom it will put all of the descriptions to each line item in a glossary at the bottom so when you PDF it out you have all those line items right that are descriptions or if you don't want to show those at the bottom and you want to PDF out out just the line items without the glossary at the bottom you can do that and then you click download as PDF Okay. Now, if you wanted the marketing collateral, you can access that from here to view or download it, or you can access the marketing collateral by going to resources, document library, and inside of the document library, you want to see the category sales collateral on the right-hand side, because see the sales collateral from the services page, which was here, you download this, this is in the PDF format. But the sales collateral from the document library, resources document library, and go to sales collateral on the right hand side under website de web design sales collateral. When you click to click on the button that says click to view there, and it's going to take you to 
a page that's going to allow you to download different versions of the sales collateral. So whether you want it in PDF format or you want it in uh, Microsoft Word format so you can edit it and change the wording, uh, or if you want it in ODT format, which is LibreOffice or OpenOffice format, we have that for you. So if you're looking for different versions uh, of the sales collateral, you want to go here for that. And on the sales collateral, and again, I'm just going to blow through this real quick so that we can get on the presentation. This is the full-blown sales collateral. Collateral. It goes over what is mobile responsive design, and that's what it focuses on. And it tells you then not only what it is, and let me zoom out on this a little bit, but after telling you what it is, then it goes and tells you why is it important, and it backs it with statistics. So then it is going to give industry statistics on the increasing popularity of, of mobile usage, and then we're going to get into where the future is going, how it's getting more and more popular. So it's a sustainable platform. Of course, WordPress is the most popular platform and more reasons on more people that are using mobile responsive sites. And then it even goes clear down into mobile how mobile usage has been changing in terms of consumer behavior. So the sales collateral, even getting further through it talks about what the competitors are doing, just what everyone else is doing in terms of their mobile marketing, and then where the future is going with it. So whenever it comes to marketing, you always want to let people know that, you know, if, the, if I'm going to build your website, I'm going to build your website that's going to last clear into the future. If they already have a site, they don't want to build and, and make the same mistake they might have made before and build something that's outdated in a year or two. They want something that's going to last the duration. Mobile Responsive is here to stay. WordPress is the most popular platform. And this is a little write-up on why the, this is really the future and let your, letting your client know, you know, the famous tagline, this will be the last website you ever need to build. And then it go, the sales collateral talks about what your in-depth free consultation could be with them from needs assessment, strategy planning, implementation, quality control, and so on and so forth. So that the point is they get through it, they understand what the service is, why it's important, where the industry is with it, what your consultation consists of, a summary of what you can do for them. So instead of having all of the line items, which are here, so if you don't want to put all of these line items in front of the client because you're going for a value sale instead of a technical sale, right? You might want to re rely on the summary of what we do and the sales collateral, which is a lot more easy for them to understand, right? And then a summary of what we do also in a checkmark list from package to package. And then what is the next step for your client? Right. So and then we give you these little boxes on putting your contact information in there and their next steps to contacting you, getting through a consultation and launching a design project. So this sales collateral is absolutely amazing and you don't have to create it yourself. It's already created for you. You just need to get in there, download it and brand it to yourself. So uh, and another thing to talk a little bit about is on the mobile responsive subject matter, Jeremy, maybe. Maybe you could let me know where this site came from. This is an example of a mobile responsive site. And for those of you out there who do not fully understand what a, a mobile responsive site means, the, the biggest misconception to what mobile responsive means is thinking that it's just mobile. And it's not just mobile. A mobile responsive site is your regular site and your mobile site. It's everything rolled up into one. It's one and the same. So it's, so what happens with mobile responsive is very simple. If, if you watch me scroll this browser window from the right to left, you're going to see it respond right about there. So if people saw that response, right, that's why they call it responsive. It's responding to the width of the window. So again, if I drag it to the right, it responds. And this is full width. So this is the width on like a, a big screen TV or a normal desktop monitor. And then if the next size down as I scroll it to the left, it responds. And this would be like the size of uh, an iPad, right? And then if I continue going down, this might be the size of um, an iPad in uh, what portrait up and down. And then if I scroll over, this might be the size of, for instance, see it just responded again. This would be the size of, say, a um, like a Samsung Note. And then this would be the size of an iPhone, right? So it's responsive. It's all in the one the same and it looks good no matter what size it's in so um, Jeremy do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the benefits of mobile responsive design at least from a sales standpoint to the client versus non-mobile responsive sure 
Um, you know, I found that there are companies out there that will try to sell the client a, a two two different sites. Uh, in my opinion, it's a it's it's a great way to make money, I guess. But in reality, a client only needs one site if they're able to get a responsive uh, responsive theme. So uh, you know, really, not to mention knowing the the increasing trend that's happening uh, with uh, with people using their mobile phones, their tablets to do searching. Uh, if re you really do, you really should push uh, put push a mobile responsive site uh, when it comes to uh, building new things for your clients. And do you find that whenever you are selling something that's mobile responsive, are you able to charge more for it, or do you just um, charge the same amount as you would for something that's not mobile responsive? Well, we actually charge a pretty good premium for our sites as it is. Uh, so I can't say that we charge specifically for mobile responsive. I mean, really, in light of responsive, uh, in light of responsive code, um, I am retrofitting all of our old sites um, with responsive code. Uh, and going forward, we don't sell a site unless it's responsive. Awesome. Makes sense. And so everyone can really understand mobile responsive. As I dragged it from right to left, this is what it would look like in an iPad landscape versus portrait versus note versus iPhone versus a really small device. And that's really the value in it. Some people will actually go out there and sell each version of it. Um, Jeremy, and just to clarify with this, um, who built this site? Um, this site was built by my in-house developer. Um, we uh, we took a, a specific theme and uh, reworked the theme to, to accommodate their needs. Awesome. And do you have any examples on a mobile responsive, uh, any additional mobile responsive sites? And feel free to say no, but I was looking for some that maybe the team had built, our team. Oh, good question. Uh, just one second. Let me Let me take a look. No, I really don't at this point. Awesome. Roy, maybe you can come up with a couple that we would be able to share that are mobile responsive that we've put together. Now, everyone, back to the PowerPoint here. Mobile responsive sites are important not just because of uh, the usability and the sustainability in terms of where they're going, but they're also important from Google's standpoint. And I pointed this out before. On June 6, 2012, Google released that they had uh, the top recommendations on for building mobile sites. And as you can see here, and I'll put this link in for everyone out there to view if they want to. I'll send this to entire audience. What Google published was is that the number one recommended way to build a mobile site is number one, sites that are that use responsive web design, i.e. sites that serve all devices on the same set of URLs with each URL serving the same HTML to all devices and using just CSS to change how the page is rendered on the device. This is Google's recommended configuration. Now this is on Google's official blog. This came from Google and I want you to point, I want you to note something. Google doesn't tell you very much but when they do tell you something you need to pay attention to it. You notice what they bolded in here, Google doesn't bold things very often either. They bolded, this is Google's recommended configuration, right? So that's something to pay attention to. From an SEO standpoint, it's going to be a good idea moving forward for the stability and, and not having a separate mobile version versus a regular version. Um, for future sustainability to make sure that you're building it mobile responsive because Google's coming out right and saying it. And if you're not familiar with that, you can even search around search engine land, publish the same thing, no noticing that Google has also seen that this is the recommended way to go with it. And if you follow our blog, we have a latest blog article on on this as well, talking about where the mobile responsive design is going. So you can check out our blog at endlessrice.com forward slash blog to look at that. I'll let that load up. So back to the PowerPoint on on this. Yeah, and Google is a big fan of it. I mean, going further into why Google's a big fan of it, responsive web design is a technique to build web pages that alter how they look using C CSS, which is just the styling. So the actual page remains the same, whether it's in, when, when it's responding. The URL does not change. And that's one of the reasons why it's more 
attractive in the future for all sites that are going to be whether mobile or regular to Google because when you have a, a mobile version of your page on a subdomain for instance it's a separate page and Google has to interpret two separate pages if it's a mobile version versus on the regular site or versus mobile responsive it's the exact same page it's the same con written content that's on there it just changes in how it's being displayed it's much easier for Google to interpret the content and evaluate it. So uh, no surprise that that's the recommended way to go forward. And in terms of why you should have a mobile responsive site, and again the sales col collateral covers this, but if you look at the increase in mobile usage from 2010 to 2012 even, there's a massive increase, and I'm sure that up through 2013 it's probably increased a lot more. Worldwide increase from 2010 to 2012 is 162% and 69% increase alone in North America. There's no question about it, the relevancy uh, uh, the, and the necessity of needing a mobile version of some sort. And with Google saying that it's mobile responsive, everyone should really understand that this is, this is not just um, good for, for you to understand what needs to be offered to the client, but this is good for you to understand the necessity of mobile responsiveness to all especially local service-based clients or local product-based clients because the majority of everyone does not have mobile responsive. But look at these numbers and look at how many people need their site rebuilt to be mobile responsive. I know a lot of people that are leading right now, whether they're selling marketing or social media, and they lead with their foot in the door on a website redesign to be mobile responsive because they feel that it's that easy to sell because there's such a huge necessity right now for the mobile responsive. It's fairly new. Um, mobile device ownership is also increasing. If you wanted to look at those statistics and look at this, smartphone owners, look at the increase in smartphones between 2003 and 2012. The trend is just skyrocketing and, you know, it, before it, it was an option to have a mobile version of your site. Maybe you would like this, maybe you would like that. But with the trends on where everything's going with smartphones and the increase in mobile browsing and mobile commercial buys off of their phone, it's not becoming so much of an option anymore as much as it's starting to become a complete and total necessity, which means the majority of people out there that do not have mobile responsive sites are out there for you to go and, and sell to. U.S. consumer ownership of smartphones has surpassed 125 million, and tablets are now owned by more than 50 million. Mobile device usage, again, is increasing, 88% increase uh, of U.S. adults, 55% of them use their phones to go online, and that's up from 39% in 2009, so massive increase. Uh, yeah, we already went over the marketinghelper.net, and I can revisit that real quickly for you. Keep in mind, there is a link off of your design services page to get to the marketing helper. So from services on your web design tab here, you see the banner, view your design portfolio. If you've domain masked the system, then you're going to see, let me go back, you're going to see your design portfolio and inside of it is a bunch of a lot of these are themes some of them are actual built sites that you can show this to your client and tell them that this is your design portfolio if they want to scroll through and see examples of what you can build and what you can do we're currently revamping and redesigning this but still this is great it, this site itself is mobile responsive so if when you show this to clients you can show them how it responds if you want to and show proof that hey this is your design portfolio and it's also mobile responsive so you can show that you have what you tell them that they should need and then you can browse through the different web designs in here you can show them social media designs the logo design that we do and even some content samples and then there's the mobile responsive tester and I'll click on the mobile responsive tester and this is what I had put uh, Jeremy's site in before. The mobile responsive tester, you can come to and put your client site in here. Keep in mind on the mobile responsive tester, what it does is, is it shows you the website that you put in on these different devices based on this screen width, but not it's not necessarily based on the actual device that you see. It's a mobile responsive tester and we put the styling of the device behind it to show you the size equivalent. But when it's mobile responsive, here's the nice thing that's mobile responsive. If you built built a site just to be iPhone compliant or Android compliant or compliant for a particular 
phone operating system, one or the other. You're, you're always going to have phones that might render it uh, some ways and other ways, but if you build it mobile responsive where it's, it's displaying based on screen width, you're going to be compatible with everything that's out there. So this is nice for you to be able to come in and show someone their site that might not be responsive compliant and show them what it would look like based on different screen widths. And it's great to be able to show them what a nice looking site would look like that's mobile responsive versus theirs. And theirs would be all cut off and it would probably cut, be cutting off half the site. So powerful sales tool there for you to be using. So you have your own design portfolio and your mobile responsive tester tool. Can't ask for much more than that. On the technical sales pitch, we're going to be going through this line by line so before i hop into this keep in mind that whenever you do go to the services in here and you click on the view package details it's going to take you to here and you're going to click on web design services and then we're going to be going over the wordpress mobile responsive line items and these line items as you can see in here, line by line by line is what we're going to be going over in the PowerPoint. So I'm just bringing everyone back around so that you can understand uh, what we're going over. So we're not just going over design in general out of the blue. We're actually going over line item by line item by line item of these particular packages so that you can understand what it is that we offer. And that's going to be important. So I'll, we'll get through these line items as quickly as we can. And then we're going to talk with Roy a little bit more about an, uh, on answering your questions. And then we're going to talk about the reseller specific website offer that we have for you and then we're going to talk to Jeremy about how his trip was out here to the Philippines. So let's get started on these. The technical sales pitch uh, means that you need to understand the line items behind the package that you're offering, right? So this is great for your clients because you want to be able to talk to your clients about it, but also it's good for you to have more tr confidence and trust whenever you get into a sales meeting to be able to close your client because you understand the packages line item by line item more. So clients that you really need to be more technical with are the clients that are more technology oriented, maybe clients that have had a site built before or they, they might even mess around with WordPress a little bit. And what are the needs that the technical sales pitch addresses? Really just bridging, bridging the technology gap between you and the client, explaining to them what's included in the services, any specific techniques or methodologies on why you're doing what you're doing with the line items and what kind of reporting that they would have in terms of project management. Web design service package details. So we'll get into it. So first line item is the installation, configuration, and customization of WordPress. So WordPress, if you're not familiar with it, is the world's largest content management system, which means that it's a system that you're able to log into the back end to and make changes on. And uh, being that it's the most popular in the world, it has the most plugins and additional features that can be bolted onto it. So for instance, let's say that you needed a... Um, I don't know, like a, a calendar scheduler or Roy, what, what are the, some of the most popular feature plugins that people ask you for? I so, suppose meeting schedulers or. Well, security plugins are one of them. Right, a security plugin or oh, sorry? even a shopping cart could be a plugin, right? Shopping cart, event schedulers, uh, testimonials, Facebook social media plugins. Yeah, so. If you don't have a plugin, which is really a bolt-on onto your site that's compatible with WordPress, that means you would have to develop it. So the difference between developing a plugin, for instance, a meeting scheduler or even a shopping cart in a plugin format, to develop it could cost you upwards of even $10,000, whereas the plugin could cost you $20. It's like an iPhone, right? It has a bunch of different apps to it, and if you had it, if you didn't have those apps available, then you'd have to build it. Would you build it? Of course you wouldn't build it. And that's why people liked iPhones so much, especially earlier on, because everyone had apps that they were selling for it, and you could just bolt them all on. And now a Android based phones have all of, all of those apps as well. So WordPress being the most popular has a tremendous amount of plugins and it's also WordPress gets updated, right? So Roy, how often does WordPress update their system and what does it mean to update the WordPress system, the core of WordPress? Kind of like Windows, you get your Windows updates, but WordPress the pu core. pushes updates to, like if I had a site built in WordPress and WordPress did an update and that actually could be pushed to my website. 
Mm-hmm. That's true. WordPress does a core update, uh, the average about once a year, and this is uh, one of their um, major updates. They do minor updates here and there, but nothing major. Once a year, though, they do come up with a with a big update. So WordPress, which is open source, and it's f- it, 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 the the essence and the the core to WordPress is free, which means that whenever we build it, you own it, right? Uh, but it, it's free and it's open source. But at the same time, they also push updates to it to what's considered to be the core. Kind of like with your Windows, you bought you bought the license to it, but you get your updates. So one of the main updates that WordPress does that's important is they do security updates, and they also do other updates. Which Roy, I don't even know what a lot of those updates consist of. But the main point is is that if WordPress is the biggest and the largest and they're pushing out relevant updates, for instance, security reasons, that's all the, re- the, the, the reasons in the world to go with WordPress because they're up to date. They're always ma- making updates several times a year anyways. And there's more plugins and features available for them than any other CMS system in the entire world. I think there was a poll taken in, and I think it was actually 2012, late 2012. And at that point in time, I think roughly pushing 15% of all sites were built in WordPress. So now WordPress theme installation, the way that WordPress works is they have pre-built themes. Uh, and whenever we have themes, we're able to use what's pre-built, which for instance is in Marketing Helper, uh, or that your design portfolio that I was showing to you here. These themes that are in here, uh, that you can click on. Let me look at the responsive themes. Whenever you click on a theme in here, you'll notice that the, these are pre-structured, right? So whenever we have theme sites versus custom sites, the theme is like a pre-built design inside of WordPress, and we can build out of that structure and that theme. So we would install that theme. Themes can be bought, they can be purchased. We have a big theme library for you to choose from for free. This is an example of a theme that happens to be mobile responsive. So themes increase build time and make it more affordable to build. And themes also come with features, right, Roy? So, Roy, what, what, what's, what, 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 what would be some of the benefits of going with a, a themed web design versus building a site completely from scratch in WordPress? Well, for one thing, it's going to be much faster, uh, not to mention cheaper. Right. And what about features? Are, uh, whenever you have a theme, is it just to... the design, or do some oh, themes feature-wise. have features? Oh, yes, they do. That's, for example, there are themes out there that have, for example, real estate self-hosting features where you can actually put up uh, your own list of real estates and they come with their own custom post types. They'll allow you to put in your real estate properties for sale and that comes built into the theme. So if you use a theme that comes with that, that comes with the theme. Yeah, so th- that's something to point out. Some themes come with a lot of functionalities built into them as well, not just design. For instance, if it's a restaurant theme, it can come with a full-blown pre-built menu in it with images and maybe even an ordering system that people would go in, place their order off the menu, and it would fax it to the restaurant. And on the back end of WordPress, when you log into the admin section, it would have all the controls for that. They come with full-blown software development for particular Mm -hmm. features for some themes. So don't think that themes are just designed. Themes can come with upwards of anywhere from ten dollars to $100,000 worth of software development behind them. And themes typically cost less than $200 each. Thus, the beauty of going with WordPress. People are asking questions, Roy, such as how many mobile responsive themes do we have for them to choose from in our own internal library? We're, we're actually constantly updating it. Uh, we're looking to launch about at least one, one to three themes a month. Right now, I'd say we have about 20 to 50. 20 to 50, that's pretty broad. I, I think the last count somewhere around 40 different examples probably but we also have a a deal uh, that we had going on with the themes on you can purchase your own theme and we have a a promo that we do with that isn't that what Roy Roy, do you mind telling them about that because I don't even remember the full details on it well you can actually choose a theme from some other source it doesn't even have to be from marketing helper so if you want if you like a theme for example from uh, themeforce.net all you have to do is purchase the theme give it to us and you'd be hard pressed to find a theme that's over sixty dollars yeah and some of the theme sites that you can go to that are really popular are, are like um, the <coughs> themeforest themeforest.net and, yeah 
there are thousands and thousands and thousands of themes to choose from. So uh, WordPress theme creation, we can create a theme or we can choose to build from a theme. So if you wanted us to build from scratch and build something out, that would be a fully custom build. If you wanted us to build using the theme, uh, then that would be a themed build, which is why we have packages from custom to themed. Now, right, let's talk a little bit about the difference between custom and themed. Now, on a on a themed build, we have certain restrictions on what we do and do not customize off of a theme. That's why themed mobile responsive mm -hmm. sites are cheaper than the custom mobile responsive WordPress sites. Now, when someone get chooses a theme and we install it and then we go forward with it. What, what are the thing? What are some of the restrictions on what we do not customize on a themed build, and what are some of the customizations that we do do to a themed build? What I usually say is we're locked into the layout and the function of the theme. So, for example, a theme has a gallery that function in, functions in a certain way. We're sort of locked into that. If you want a mm -hmm. different gallery that functions in a different way, we're going to have to add in a different gallery plugin for that, and there's some additional cost for that. Mm -hmm. Layout-wise, we, we are also uh, limited by the layout of the theme. So, for example, if the theme has a sidebar on the right, you can't put the sidebar on the left. Right. So the majority of a theme, when, is, so people will understand, with themes, you have a particular structure and layout to the site, and that's not modified on themed builds, typically. Depends on the theme, usually. On custom builds, we start with the mock-up, right? So we'll build the structure uh, to custom mm -hmm. specs with a custom build. And that's really the biggest difference. And for w the easiest way for you to look at it in your eyes, um, between you and your client, if you went with a theme build, you need to be able to show the client the theme structure and have them agree to that. And for the client to understand that they're going to go with this general theme versus if you're going to go to your client and tell your client that you're going to talk with them and come up with the concept of the site and you're going to do a mock-up for them. If you mention those words at all to your client, then you need to be pr purchasing custom from us because that's custom. So if you're going to sit down and tell your client during your sales pitch that I'm going to brainstorm the entire idea behind you with you, we're going to go through the mock-up phase together and based on what you want, we're going to build it. That's custom. So that's really the biggest difference between the two. Now, blog setup, configuration, and installation. Blogs are really important. WordPress has the most up-to-date and advanced blogs that are out there in terms of how you can configure it and set it up. So yeah, the sites that we build do come with blog setups and configuration. And for the custom packages, we do do mock-ups. So if you wanted to interface with your client and figure out what it is that you would be wanting, we would be doing mock-ups for you. Uh, Roy, during the, the, the mock-up, phase, how long does it take to turn around a mock-up? Uh, for the initial mock-up, anywhere between three to five business days. Okay. So we do do mock-ups for you on the custom ones, and there's quite a bit of intake that we have on that, and then we'll produce a mock-up, and then we'll do revisions as necessary moving forward. Structural mock-ups of the website. Roy, do you mind talking a little bit about structural mock-ups and what they ap apply to and when? Well, first off, we have to start with a wireframe. Uh, wireframe will basically, will basically give us the base layout of the website, where the logo goes, where the image slider goes, what goes above the fold, where sidebars are, where, where widgets go. Uh, widgets are special areas in WordPress where you can put in a functionality, like perhaps a calendar, a testimonial, uh, social media feed and such, such like that. And widgets allow you for a greater degree of uh, modular capabilities for your site, where you can actually shift out customizations and functions whenever you want. So these are the things Awesome. That, so yeah, uh, as, as part of the, the mock-up, so people understand, if whenever you're talking to your client and if you're going to go custom, um, you're going to do yourself a big favor and your client a big favor if you start with the structure to the site. It, really, that's what you need to start with. It's like if you're building a house, you don't start with what color it is. You start with where the walls are going to go. So the first thing you want to do with the client is get get the structure 
finalize with what they're okay with. And you can engage with our consultants on that, but preferably before we get into the graphic design on the mock-up, solidify the structure with your client because otherwise your client's going to be flipping their mind back and forth and back and forth on the mock-up they want based on modifying the structure all over the place. You should solidify the structure of the site with the client, then talk about the mock-up in terms of colors and grain and texture and what type of banner, that sort of thing, right? So if you can differentiate the two types of mock-up, structural versus the graphically designed one, and get the structural solidified with the client before moving on to the graphically designed one, you're going, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. And ours, right, Roy? <laughs> so, um, Moving forward here, custom banner mockups. We do do banners as well. Banners make a site extraordinarily attractive, and it's something that uh, I think a lot of clients need. And there's a certain amount of banners included in each package. So we do the custom banner uh, designs, and it, those really the banner designs and any graphic design, if it's specific to a client site, if they're able to provide images to us that are personalized about them or their company, it's going to help us a lot because we'll cut those up and use them inside of the graphic design. So for instance, instead of using a photoshopped image in here of two people that are about their company, it'd be really cool if we could use a, an image of maybe their president and their COO, you know, just giving it that, that touch and putting their names on it. That way it's just more customized to them. Free image sourcing. Whenever it comes to images on a website, you have to remember there are databases out there um, uh, that we can uh, go to to get free images. But free images are limited. Uh, if we w are going to go to uh, uh, Photostock or some other image sites and buy images, well, how much we, we pay for the images is, is how much it's going to cost to you. We'll do free image sourcing, but we not, might not find the best images that are out there. If your client's able to provide images, that's great. Uh, and Roy, how does it work if someone wants us to use images that cost money that are paid, such as through, um, uh, what, what is it, iStock Photo? Yeah, I stop for it. Well, what we'll first do is we can, um, what we can do is we can choose the images for them, meaning we'll go through the mock-up stage, we'll go through the build, and we'll choose several images for them. We'll use the watermarked image just to get them to know how it will look like in their site. Then if they like it, we'll give them the link, have them purchase it, give us the final copy, then we'll incorporate the final image into the site. Awesome. And do we charge an X amount above what the photo actually costs for sourcing them? Well, generally, we recommend the client purchase. There's a 10% the charge on it, or something. Mm -hmm. um, if the client mm -hmm. wants us to purchase okay. the stock photography for them, then there's a 10% charge for processing. Right. Right. Okay. So that's how the images work, and the images we use for, of course, splicing into the banners and other areas in the website. Custom design banners. A little bit more on that. Um, well, what else is here? Whenever we do do the banner designs, I mean, some of the nicer banners that I've seen, yeah, there's multiple layers to them and a lot of texture and the images are embedded in them. But we also are making sure that we match the style of the banners to the overall design around the site. So it's best if we have certainly the mock-up done and color solidified before doing the banners because we want to match it. You know, it's like interior design almost. Content uploading. Yes, we do upload content onto a site. But as you see, as part of our content uploading, we talk about things like font, header, bullet formatting. And that's important because if we just upload the comment, the content and do not format it or insert images if you're wanting us to inside of the content, it's not going to look very good. It's going to look like a Word document, but this is supposed to be a designed website. So when we do upload the content, we do take the time to format it and make sure that the font's the same and that the header's there and if we need a format bullets or depending on the type of content just so that you know that we do format the content when we do upload it. Contact forms. Um, whenever we in install the contact forms, Roy, maybe you can talk a little bit about I think the contact forms and contact forms configuration because there's, uh, and I'll go back here, if you don't mind talking a little bit about, yeah, on the basic packages, we install contact forms. People fill it out, it emails over to your client. But what are, what are some of the other things that we've done in the past with contact forms above and beyond just the typical, right? Maybe talking a little bit about gravity forms or maybe MailChimp integration. Any other things that you might oh, want yeah. to mention? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the the heart of any website, especially if you wanted to generate leads for you, will be this uh, this tie-in between the call to action, the lead capture, the contact form, the opt-in, and the autoresponder. We can actually set up the contact form to autorespond with a particular free offer. If you want, for example, um, your basic call to action is uh, uh, enter your email to get a free report. When they enter in their email, a free report is automatically automatically sent to them by the contact form or by the system. And um, um, a level up to this is we can even tie in to mailing list services like perhaps Aweber or Mailchimp, giving you that much control over your mailing list services, your email marketing services. Right, right. And uh, so contact forms are important. I mean, and what do you do with that contact information? And although it's not part of these slides, um, one of the things that since you all out there, most all of you are marketing companies, you need to talk to your client about what do they do whenever they get a lead? How do they manage their leads? So if this is just going to email them their lead, that's okay. But what do they do with it from there? It's going to sit in their inbox. Who manages their inbox? Who follows up with their leads? How do they organize them? How do they take their notes on them? How do they set their meetings on them? It, main, the main point is, is when contact forms only email to your client, um, it's missing a step, which is getting funneled into a lead management system that can be managed by someone, right? So if you're interested in that, um, we do have the capacity to install a free um, Sugar CRM lead management system. And we can even generate from the Sugar CRM the, the contact form from there so that when someone fills out the contact form, it would put it into Sugar CRM, and which is a full-blown uh, CRM for contact management. It can even do project management, and it does lead tracking, and it can even do newsletters and email campaign management. If you want it to wear for your clients that whenever you they get their, their contact form filled out, that it goes into a lead management system that they can manage themselves. That's a big deal for you as a marketing company. And we charge a flat free fee for the full uh, setup uh, and configuration on Sugar CRM installation of $200. So keep that in the back of your head. As a marketing firm, to be able to add that on, that's huge. And we can install that giant system on their hosting, and, and you know they, they don't have to pay monthly fees for it. It's free. So that's a really big deal. Moving forward, footer design and optimization. Footer design is really important. Now, with footer, footer design work, we can do a lot of different things. And sometimes, uh, Roy, if I'm correct, you can even get specific plugins for WordPress just for configuring the footer of your site. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, it keep that in mind that we do pay attention to the footer and it, it's kind of like, you know, if you don't have this, a nice footer, it's almost like you don't have shoes on. This is also important for uh, content siloing, actually. Uh, and can you talk a little bit about that? Well, content siloing is the uh, act of uh, linking together all your different pages in your site and your con different content just so it's easier to get to everything. And uh, the footer will mainly also have links to your, for example, most recent blog posts, to your featured artworks, to your portfolio gallery that are outside of the main navigation. The thing about the main navigation is it gives you the, the chapters of your book, so to speak, but it doesn't give the inside pages. You're going to have to drill down to the main navigation. But the footer can have links directly into the specific page that you want inside the site. Absolutely. So, yeah, footers can be utilized yeah, for a lot of different things. Yeah, and if part of the footer you want us to do a, a banner down towards the bottom of the footer, we can do that as well. So if you look at the bottom of this slide, it says, call today to schedule your free review or talk with the representative. That's really nice. So if you want a big call to action banner at the bottom in the footer, we can design that out as well. SEO plugins and optimization. As part of WordPress, WordPress sites are not known to be SEO friendly because of the back end of them make it easier to perform SEO things related to things such as 301 redirects. And uh, Roy, what are the SEO plugins that we use for WordPress most commonly? There's a uh, patch. SEO, there's Yoast, and all of them are actually interchangeable in terms of function. So if you have a particular plugin that you are comfortable with, an SEO plugin, we can use that. Awesome. 
and so that will help us to do 301 redirects and things like generate an XML sitemap. Uh, you know, the XML sitemap, if people aren't familiar with that, it's just really uh, a particular markup language that puts all of the pages on your site in a specific format on a specific URL on your site so that when the search engine robots crawl your site, they get a table of contents of all of your pages. And then we also submit that sitemap into Google Webmaster and Bing Webmaster during an SEO campaign. But uh, Roy, do you know anything about um, WordPress XML sitemaps that auto update on their own? Oh yes, there are quite a number of plugins that do that. So what will happen is the sitemap will actually, you can set the sitemap to automatically update with the uh, Google uh, Webmaster tools so that you don't have to keep submitting it on your own. Absolutely. So let me get back to that. On XML sitemaps, whoops, sorry, webinar is out of control. On the XML sitemaps, you know, if every single time you add a new page to the site, you need to update that sitemap on your own, it's going to become very cumbersome, right? So the nice thing about having um, an auto sitemap generator on your site is that it will always update according to the new pages that are added on the fly. So you don't need to be updating your XML sitemap all the time. User sitemap creation and implementation. We also create a user sitemap. And the user sitemap, as you're probably familiar with, is usually a link found down in the footer of your site so that if the users on your site, not the search engine bots, but the human users on your site, want to go and see a table of contents to your website, they can do that. Domain redirect optimization. Uh, Whenever we do the domain redirect as part of the web design, whenever we install this site, uh, if you're not familiar, by default, you know, you have a www dot version and a non www dot version on your site, and we'll redirect one to the other. So it's really just an SEO full domain redirect that we do to make sure that whenever the site does initially index that it's on the right track. SEO plugin for WordPress. Again, we talked a little bit about that, so I got ahead. Google Analytics script installation and installation. It's just letting you know that whenever we do install this site, it will come with Google Analytics installed on it. So as part of the website turnover, you'll have traffic tracking in place already. And for those of you who are not familiar with Google Analytics, it's the most popular traffic tracking program in the world, and you don't have to download anything for it. And then we also make sure that we install Google Webmaster. For those of you not familiar with Google Webmaster, Google Webmaster tells you everything that Google wants you to know about your site from how their bots are crawling your site, how often they are, if you have broken links, and any other issues they feel pertinent to be advising you about from malware to anything else. Now, security plugins. Security is a, a big subject matter for WordPress sites and uh, Roy, we even have a special package just for updating uh, website security. Do you mind talking a little bit about that? Well, as you may know, WordPress is indeed quite powerful. One of the many caveats, though, is uh, the security of WordPress. However, with just a simple uh, security protocols, you can negate about 90% of all the security risks. Now, if you want to negate 100%, that is also possible. There are quite a lot of steps that are involved to do this, but this is quite possible and we can do this. We do have special packages that will allow us to lock down your WordPress site and completely prevent any hacking whatsoever. Yeah, so if, if you have a client site out there that hasn't had any security updates to it and you don't know a lot about it, you can, you can call up uh, our sales department and talk about our, our security WordPress update packages that we have and you might want to avail of one of those. Browser compatibility check, mm -hmm. of course it's important for your site to show up well on Firefox and Chrome and Opera and Internet Explorer and Safari and we make sure that when we do build sites that they are cross-browser compatible. So do keep that in mind. Mobile responsive design, of course, yes, we offer mobile responsive design. Uh, but when, whenever we do do mobile responsive design, we do do an iPhone compatibility check, an iPad compatibility check, uh, BlackBerry compatibility check, and check on other smartphones and tablets. So, uh, yeah. Social media integration. We make sure that we do install the social media buttons on the site. Uh, those can be installed 
wherever you desire for the most part. Uh, I noticed someone commented in the questions box we have here that it's better to put these at the top of the site than on the footer. It's really it's really whatever you prefer to have. Some people's priorities are to have it more in their client's face on uh, the initial point of view of when they land on the site, which means you would want some of these icons up at the top, and some people prefer to have them in the footer, and some people want them on both. You can even have them on a sidebar. So we do install those so that we're connecting the their traffic base from their site through to their social media profiles. Email installation and configuration. This is um, not part of the mobile responsive packages, but this can be uh, an add-on. Email installation and configuration, I mean, businesses need emails and they need email systems. If they don't not are running on any emails, on typical cPanel hosting providers, we can use things like Squirrel Mail, um, but if they're needing a big business email system, you might want to talk to Roy about that and probably refer that over to an, another provider such as Rackspace. Google Business installation is free for up to 10 users, but I did want to put this in here because it's not anymore. So <laughs> what's missing on this slide is the big red circle with the cross through it. Google Business email started at, for 50 users for free and then it went down to 10 users for free and it recently is no longer offered for free for business users. So we will need to update that on our line items and also um, find find some other free alternatives to that. But again, typically Squirrel Mail off of a, a normal cPanel installation will work. Website backup migration and, into, and installation. Yes, we do install the website whenever we are done with it, which can take quite a bit of time, but we also keep the backup of the website for up to three months in storage, just in case something goes wrong and, and you weren't taking backups on the hosting location and you need us to provide you with a copy of it. And we do migrate the website to your own hosting. Um, we have talked about offering hosting, but for now you need to have your own hosting or the client does, which is not hard to do at all. If you just call up HostGator or GoDaddy or Bluehost, what you can do is you know, pay, pay as little as $10 a month or even as low as with some places $7 a month. And then what we can do on that is install the site on that hosting location for you and configure it and you really don't need to do anything so you can host it or the client can host it resell our exclusive web design service are we there already all right roy do you by chance have the line item details we we're now going to talk about the big reseller web design offer and and roy will get those packages sent over to me and roy i think you can actually put them through the the go to to webinar chat box and oh, while okay. Roy's doing that we'll uh, take any questions about the web design um, packages that people might have we've had a tremendous amount of questions come through so far and we've got um, Stephen and, and Trevor as well as Roy helping to answer a lot of these questions so bear with us here if we haven't gotten to some of them but in regards to some of the questions that I'll take here I'll take one or two here Um, so Mark says, so on a theme-based website, a customer cannot provide their own image for the brand banner, or can they? Yeah, customers can provide their own own images, and we'll splice those up and put them into the banner. Bruce says, assuming that I provide all graphics and layout requirements with my intake form, what is the typical total elapsed time from submission to completion? Well, Bruce, that would depend on how big the build is. Or is it a thousand-page website? Is it a five-page website? And we, we will let you know, based on the specs, how long it's going to take. Uh, but it, whenever we tell you the turnaround time, we base it on when we start development. So before we start development, we'll have a sign-off on the theme or the, the mock-up. We should have the materials in our hands from the images to the plugin solidified to the content. So that whenever we get into the development, we can give you a fair time frame on turnaround because if we're, we're waiting on approvals and feedback and all of that, then we have all the in-between. So um, 
whenever you're speaking with your design consultant or you're putting through the request, we'll let you know how long it will take to build. Roy, can you give an average build time, assuming we have all the materials and the design is approved and we're going forward in development, how long it takes to turn around a typical build that, let's say, is um, a themed 10-page or 20-page um, website build? Uh, what would be turnaround time on that? All right. What I always standard do say is standard tour packages, right? Yep, standard tour packages um, for the build itself, meaning after the mock-up is approved. So this is actually just for the build. The reason yes. why we don't include yes. the mock-up stages. And this, all assuming we have the materials up front, like we should. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. About uh, 15 to 20 business, uh, 15 to 20 business days. Okay, 15 to 20 business days. So we're looking at around uh, a month. Looking at around a month. Mm -hmm. That's a cap, though. It can go much and faster. And were, were you that. able to? Okay, and were you able to send over the? Uh... Yes, I have. Um... Uh, you're not able to. Let me. I'll fire up my Skype so Roy can send that over to me. Everyone's like, drum roll, will you please get around to the design packages? Hey, I, I know who can help us Sorry. out with filler. Jeremy, why don't you hop on the horn here and start talking about your experience in uh, the Philippines? Jeremy flew out here and was able to come and harass all of our staff and. Then we kicked him out of the Philippines. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But I'm coming back. Don't worry, I'm coming back. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> but the one thing I do have to say about website security for all of you other resellers out there, let me give you a personal experience. I brought a Joomla site to, to Endless Rise. Uh, the the previous company that, that the client was paying was very jaded when she left them because they were, she, they were charging her quite a bit of money. And they were so mad at her that they put a virus in her in her site, delivered it to us, and at that point we started hitting all kinds of bells and whistles um, with other people's antiviruses, and just eventually we, we ended up having to lock the site down. Um, I we, we I went to the web design department there at ERI and told them all the problems. They went in um, page by page, line by line, found the virus, deleted the virus, got uh, was able to get the site back up. I then went through my hosting service and turned on website security protection, and her site has been safe ever, ever since. So for those of you that are either A, stepping into a real sticky situation with a client site already being infected, or for those of you that, that may come across that problem, do know that Endless Rise web design team is very capable of getting in there and fixing that problem. Um, as far as my stay in the Philippines, uh, the greatest advice I can give anyone now is that if you're planning on going on vacation, go to the Philippines. It's affordable. It's beautiful. I'm, I live in Texas, and when I got back, it was actually hotter and more muggy here than it was in that tropical country. <laughs> uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I can't tell you how many times my wife reminds me that, oh, my God, we need to go back to the Philippines. Um, the cost was unbelievably amazing. I think the most expensive cab ride we took was a total of six U.S. dollars. Uh, and that was giving a very nice, healthy tip to the cabbie. But he drove us for 40 minutes to the airport, helped us get our bags out, thanked us profusely for the money we paid him, and we still walked away only spending $6 for that cab ride. Uh, the food there is absolutely phenomenal. Not to mention, I would certainly recommend you stay in Makati, because because of the, of the fact that Makati is on the high ground and the fact that it's a financial hub of the Philippines, it's extremely secure. When I say secure, my wife... A uh, little Texas girl was walking around at 3 o'clock in the morning looking for something to do. I think she was trying to find a coffee shop or something. Um, but at 3 o'clock in the morning, she was walking the streets of Makati with not a care in the world because in front of just about every building is an armed security guard for the protection of the building and tourists that are there. Uh, you know, the, the, the sights to go see. I mean, once you get outside the city and you get anywhere above, uh, you know, like such, as a, such as a hilltop or a mountaintop, Everywhere you look is like a, a scenery from, from, from one of these fantasy shows. There's either an island off in the distance, a yeah. um, uh, forest. I mean, uh, amazing, amazing place to go. I've already told all of my people in my company that we are going to be in the Philippines by December of 2014 for damn sure. <laughs> awesome. And, Jeremy, you were able to, to tour the office, see the office, and spend some time here and talk with the staff. What did, what was your reaction to the, the office and the staff? Oh, yeah, that's right. I did come see you guys, too, didn't I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yes. Okay, the office is is phenomenal. I mean, you guys are on the 30, 32nd, 31st, and you know, 30th, or, no, it's 31st and 32nd floor. Um, when you get up there, you can tell that Paul and Leanne have put a ton of work into 
um, into creating not only a good environment that provides for uh, for us resellers, but they also provide they also provide a great uh, a great place to work for their employees. I got a chance to interview multiple employees, mostly uh, uh, supervisors of various different departments. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, you know, I I think the camaraderie that you guys have built, the the system that you, the systems that you have in place, the facilities, everything is just absolutely stellar. And I gotta say, it it it, it further it gave me even more confidence in working with Endless Rise for the long term. Awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun having Jeremy out here. Jeremy, how long were you out here for? We were there for eight, eight wonderful days. And the flight was not that bad. Awesome. Uh, we flew in through China. Uh, we went into Guangzhou, China. And, yeah, it was very uneventful. I mean, we were able to get there safe. It was actually 27 hours to get there, 27 hours to go, 25 hours to get back. Keep in mind, we're in Texas. So. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, the souvenirs were awesome. Shopping, restaurants, uh, people. Everybody, you know, you go to a foreign country, and most people will say, oh, everybody speaks English there. No, really, in the Philippines, they're shocked if you speak their language. Uh, so, so English really is the primary language in signage, um, in uh, trying to get directions anywhere. I mean, it's, it's so accommodating to, uh, to, 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 to the English-speaking people. Awesome. Well, everyone, I've got the line items here, and, and Roy, if you have uh, those images to send over to me again of some of the themes we can use. So everyone on the line, we've got a special promo that we're going to be running for people over the next week, and then the rates on this are going to go up. We're offering people that are on the line that, that need their own website, in other words, for your own marketing and design firm, not not because you happen to have a side project for uh, some product or because you sell lamps or because you have a lawn mowing business on the side. This is only for your own website that you're going to use to resell our product because we're going to give you an unbelievable rate on it. And what's going to be included in this website is, one, it's going to be mobile responsive, right? And with all the pages included, it's probably going to be 10 pages or more than 10 pages. We're going to make sure that you have a blog set up, and we're going to let you choose from your choice on the mobile responsive themes, and I'll show you uh, your choices in a bit. Um, it will be a themed, templated build, so you'll have to choose the structure, then we'll fill everything in. We're going to give you seven templated banners, banners that we created, one for each service. So as part of the site we're going to build for you, we're going to, we're going to have pre-built content. We're going to have your services page and then one page for each service. So you'll have a, a page for web design, SEO, ORM, local buzz, site audit, social media, and PPC. So for those seven services, we're going to have your own banner for those for each service. But it's going to be a templated banner, so it'll be part of the site because these sites are pre going to be pretty much pre-built for you. Uh, images and photos, we'll have five pre-selected photos outside of just the, the banners that we're going to be doing. And we're going to create a call to actions graphic for you. Um, in terms of the logo, yeah, we'll be using the logo and the theme lot of modifications, the logo upload if you already have a logo. If you need logo design, that would be additional. And we're going to create a custom homepage banner for you. And Roy, can you fill me in on why the custom homepage banner says three? Sorry, that's my mistake. It's supposed to be just one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take your images, if you have any, or if you don't have any, we're just going to create some images for you. And we are going to create a unique home banner for your website, which will be uh, attuned to your uh, color scheme, to your preference. For example, you want your face there. You want, for example, uh, some graphics from a stock photography site. We can do that for you. Right. Right. On, we're going to also make sure that the domain masking is in place so that you have a login button on your site so that if your clients were set up to log in to the dashboard, it's all domain masked and set up for you as part of your site. And of course, that means that we'll also create a button to where if people wanted to view your design portfolio, they'd have that off your site as well and make sure that's all domain masked and set up. We'll put together a sales slideshow that we're going to do with your sales collateral, right? So what we're going to do mm -hmm. is is we're going to take the sales collateral and put that in a slideshow. Roy, will that, will that be done for every single services page? Uh, yeah, that will. every single services page will have its own slideshow. Right. 
so that's that's actually going to be a decent amount of work and we'll make sure that we set up the google authorship on the site which is actually the publishership site wide and then on the blog of course we'll be setting up the authorship for you and the content that we'll be providing for you that's going to be pre-written for you you can modify it later but we'll have pre-written content for your home page your about us your contact us and your services again this will be templated content so on all these sites that we sell on part of this packages they're all going to get the same content and, and services banners but it, the, the point the of it is is that you can rewrite the content as you go forward if you wanted to switch out a banner in the future you could but this is going to give you very good content on a home about us contact us in your service primary services overview page furthermore for all of the templated content we'll be providing you with web design services content and images seo orm local buzz site audit social media and ppc so that seven pages of pre-written content each page will have its own banner and we'll have some images i'm sure we'll be putting in with the content to make it look really nice and then on the sales collateral this is the, the sales slider for every single page. We're going to take that sales collateral. We're going to put the basic branding on there for your company and put it in a slideshow on each services page. Because we don't want to publish the sales collateral online, like we said, but we will put it in a slider. Uh, it means that it won't be indexable, the slideshow, but we will put it in there for you so that your clients can go on your site, see this great page about web design or SEO, and then go through the sales collateral in a slider which is going to be really nice for you. Social media integration, the typical social media links to your Facebook, miscellaneous social media links in your Twitter, and then, of course, the typical SEO setup on the site from um, making sure that the plugin is, is set up for the XML sitemap generator and all this other stuff, which is really part of a general plugin. But the Google Analytics and Google Webmaster will make sure that that's installed. Typical cross-browser compatibility checks, contact form installation, uh, if you have a lead capture system you want us to link it up to, we can do that. We can also set up the autoresponder system for you so people, when they fill out the contact form, at least get an email saying, thank you, we've received your request, we'll be getting a hold of you right away. And then the normal, we would install the site for you, migrate it to your hosting environment, of course, and keep the website back up for the normal three months like we do. And then we have our website optimizer, which will go ahead and, and give you the website optimization installation on the third party that we have for the image optimization, the CSS consolidation, and the content caching, and then the typical security setup that we do with our WordPress sites. So all of this that we do, if this was all piecemealed out to be put together on the labor behind it would be $3,000. And if you guys, if any... Uh, if any of you on this webinar are needing your own site, we're going to be offering this to you for $500 this week. Uh, so that's a really big deal for you. And then if you want to be able to get this for $500, I need you guys to write down this promo code. And let me just um, space this out so it's easier for you to read. The promo code that you want to write down if you're interested in grabbing this package is going to be exclusive me 87 b so th this is for everyone that's on the webinar that chose to stick around until the end that I really appreciate you all being on the webinar. And, you know, maybe you have a website right now that's your main website, right, for your company, but maybe you're even interested in another website that you want to put up just for targeting carpet cleaning companies, or maybe you just want to target pesticide companies or, um, you know, whatever other niche might be out there that you want to go after if you've ever wanted to put up a site just to target a particular niche well you might want to start with this one and then maybe you just want to modify the banners on your own going down the line or something like that and tweak the content so this is a really big deal not only are we giving you all of the content behind it we're also giving you all of the banner design behind it we're branding all of the sales collateral to your company and putting it on all the services pages in a slideshow format and giving you a full-blown modern modern looking mobile responsive site for your company so if you're going to go out there and sell mobile responsive design what what would what, what should be one of the first things that you should do you should have your own website in a mobile responsive format, right? And it's not necessary. It's not 100% necessary. That's why we gave you marketing helper, your design portfolio that's mobile responsive in case your clients want you to show them what you have that's mobile responsive. But it's a good idea. So anyone that's in need of this, this is the biggest, best opportunity for you to be able to jumpstart on this. And Jeremy, you're probably wanting to kick me right now because I think a long time ago you asked me for something like this and we weren't offering it then. 
Uh, well, I will tell you, uh, don't open your mail. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm glad you guys are finally offering this because I agree. Um, <laughs> the um, uh, the reseller, the, uh, every, I think every reseller needs to have uh, needs to be evolving into in, in, into responsive sites because I mean in the next in the next few years that's all that's going to be offered. So. Yeah, ab absolutely. Let me let me go ahead and open up a couple of images on some mockups that we have on what this would look like for people. Showing folder. And I'm still trying to. So these are one of the one of the mockups that we came up with. That's a theme version that we'd be putting together, which would be something like this uh, to be finalized. But you would have all your primary services, testimonials, and everything else you would need up in there. And we'd be doing the the banner design, and then we'd have the content in the middle, and we'd be putting out the primary services towards the bottom and designing out your footer on here. And we have another one as well. And we have we'll be able to come up with more options on this at the same time. And Roy will be able to, if you're hitting up Roy in, in uh, the design side, he can send you these packages as well. And let me actually, um, we can, we can, Roy, if you can figure out on GoToMeeting how to send that, um, the design packages maybe out to people so that they can have them for reference. Um, in the go-to meeting, we can put an attachment in there. Keep in mind, if you want to get a hold of us, you can put in a proposal request or inside your dashboard on the top left-hand side, you have the live support. You have your dedicated sales consultant here, but for that's on the marketing side. You can always call in to general sales and ask for Roy or Robert, and they're the design consultants, or and Roy, uh, maybe I can also put your contact information up here for people so Roy's contact information direct is I'll make this as big as I can it's Roy at endlessrise.com Roy what's your Skype ID uh, my Skype ID is uh, Roy dot endless Roy dot endless rise and then the phone Roy what's your phone extension 75 you're really quiet I don't think your microphone's in your front of you yeah your microphone's tipped up on your head <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that yeah my extension number is 75 okay great so let me make this bigger for everyone so you can write down if you do need Roy's contact information you can always call into a direct line or if you want to write down this contact information for Roy you can uh, in order to get a hold of him so keep in mind mobile responsive design right now everyone is really really big some of the most important things about it is is that the the mobile everyone that's using mobile device of some sort or a smartphone to access websites is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it's only going to continue to, to grow larger in other words clients are going to be faced at some point to have a mobile solution and the key on why they need mobile responsive is is because from an SEO standpoint Google's tired of having to evaluate the primary site and a separate mobile site that's supposed to be the same content on a different domain and they're pushing people to consolidate in a mobile responsive format so that's the purpose and that's the reasoning behind it and you should be able to go out there and close everyone down because there's never been such a larger demand and migration into one new type of design than right now you've always had a mobile version of a site that you could do you've always had a regular version but this particular type of design work which is mobile responsive is relatively new it's the number one recommended way to build the mobile compliant sites as per Google and people can run into issues in the future with SEO if they don't build it out that way and they want to have a separate mobile site and a regular site so now is really a great time to capitalize on that and it's a good way to get your foot in the door to also pull in marketing clients because if you just offer SEO or other forms of online marketing but you don't offer design and your client goes to a web design company that also offers marketing you run the risk of losing a client and vice versa so anyhow uh, Jeremy do you have any closing sentiments on anything any shout outs to people any any sales secrets any Jeremy Joe motivation for people 
<laughs> uh, well, I definitely have some shout outs to Stephen, Trevor, Roy, uh, Jinky, uh, God, I can sit here and go on forever, Q, um, Tim, Justin, all of those people that I had such a good time with, uh, whether it was drinking a beer or whether it was eating a burger. Um, I miss you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again. And those of you, those resellers out there, if you have the privilege of working with any of these people, treat them, uh, treat, treat them like their family because they're definitely worth it. Um, and other than that, uh, for all of you that, that aren't selling responsive sites, I would recommend you get into it as fast as you can. Awesome. So do I. So everyone, we've got, um, uh, let's see here. Let me take a couple last questions. How long is the website promo on this? Uh, the, 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 the promo just for your own site that promo is going to be running for this week, and then we're going to be adjusting the pricing. The pricing on it is going to go up after this week, so we'll still have it available, but it's not going to be as affordable, right? So, uh, anyhow, the whenever I sign off on a webinar, I always like to hit people up on wh what you might want me to talk about on the next webinar. Um, clearly, this upcoming Friday, which is tomorrow, we have a webinar about um, some sale, a sales program and sales software that does, uh, it does follow-ups, uh, auto follow-ups for you. It ties into physical mail systems. It comes with all these marketing materials. That webinar is tomorrow. If you got an email for that webinar tomorrow and the registration link didn't work, it's because Infusionsoft's messing up. If you take that actual link, copy it, and paste it in the browser window, it works just fine. So if you did get a webinar link for tomorrow and you clicked on it and it didn't work and give you a 404, just copy the link, put it in the browser window, and it works just fine. Uh, what exact date does this promo end on? Let's say that we're going to end the promo on the end of the 19th. So the promo will be available on that site just for you between now and the 19th. And keep in mind, as part of the July Insane promotion on any design websites of any kind through the month of July, we're offering 15% off on them. And that's part of the insane July independence promotion that we put out there. So for the month of the July, not only do we have an insane promotion, if you're needing your own site developed for you with templated content banners and that whole nine yards, but we're also offering 15% off on the rest of the web design. And um, one other update I have for everyone in the video library, keep in mind after this is recorded, at the same day like today, I'll be able to have this recorded and uploaded in the webinar archive. Um, so you go to resources, video library, and on the right-hand side in the categories, you see webinar archive. You'll see that this is where we upload our webinars. So we have the one from June 27th, 7th, July 3rd, and even July 9th. So on July 9th, we did a reputation management services webinar. So we've covered all of our primary services and big webinars, if you look back to this. So on May 30th, we did um, our big SEO technical versus value sales pitch webinar. We did the local buzz webinar. We did the social media webinar. We did the PPC remarketing webinar, which I'm still needing to upload all the remarketing packages. We're working on it. And then we did our reputation management webinar. And today we have our web design webinar. So we've covered all of the primary services. So my question to the audience and everyone that's still sticking around, does anyone um, have any primary suggestions on what you want me to cover Oh, it didn't like that. And our webinar that's going to be two day or two weeks from today will be the next webinar. Does anyone have any? And with that, on my on the live webinar, my PC crashed due to a automatic Windows update. So I'm re recording this little splicing at the end to give a proper sign off to those watching the recording. And uh, the next webinar, again, will be in uh, two weeks from the 12th. So the next webinar will be actually from the 11th. So the next webinar will be on the 26th, or I'm sorry, on the 25th. And we'll be sending an email out to let you know what that webinar is all about. So hopefully mm -hmm. you have a wonderful next end of your week, everyone. And we'll be in touch shortly with the next webinar.